Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Zandesia and today I'm doing with you the pattern of a pagoda sleeve. It is the one that is basic until the elbow and then goes flare at the bottom. If you did get my little PDF booklet, it's the style 307. For today's style, my pagoda sleeve, in my booklet I show you or I explain to you how to do it by slashing method. But for today's example, I'm going to do it by pivoting. You'll see it's much, much faster. To do my sleeve by pivoting, I'm going to start by placing my block in the middle of my paper. Make sure you have enough room all around because when we do develop, we're going to enlarge a lot the width of the pattern. Like I said, the top part of the sleeve is not going to change. So I'm going to trace from the elbow notch, the top part, until the other side elbow notch. Make sure you indicate your grain line. Remove the block and trace your grain line. Then maybe dotted line, you're going to trace the elbow level. To do like what I'm saying in my little booklet, I'm going to ask you to measure six centimeter down but this measurement is not part of the technique. It's just a measure I decide because it gives me an opening at the bottom that I like. It could be much less and it could be even a little bigger if you want. Now we're going to put back the block right at the original position. And now you should see your block in three part. You have the top part, which is already trace and you have the bottom part that you could divide in two. We have the left side and the right side that we will trace separately. Now what you're going to do is hold your sleeve at the elbow on the left side because I'm starting on the left side. I'm going to lift my pattern exactly at the elbow level and pivot, so push my block until I reach the mark that I did six centimeter lower. Now you could unfold and we're going to trace the left side, two straight line and to indicate the middle line you have, you could do a little mark at the bottom and a little dot at the elbow grain line intersection. Now I remove the block and I'm going to connect the bottom reference to the little dot, the little dot to the elbow notch. Now I'm going to do the other side the same way. So I put it back at the original position. I'm going to hold my notch at the underarm seam, fold and pivot until my reference point touch the six centimeter down. Now I could trace and again I'm going to do a little reference at the bottom and indicate the intersection of the grain line and elbow. Then just remove the block then we trace from the bottom to the little dot the dot to the notch. The inside line that we just trace we don't really use them. I ask you to trace them so you could see you'll be conscious about what you added. You see the big opening that we add and you also see that we elongate. Now I'm going to add some more on both underarm seam by going square at the bottom line, move your ruler until you touch the elbow notch and we trace. And then the same thing on the other side. Now the last thing to do for the sleeve pattern is to trace the bottom. The technique that we use most of the time for all shirt sleeve. The idea is that to follow the way your arm fall, usually it does bend towards the front. So you need a little longer in the back and a little shorter in the front. And that's what we will do even if there's no cuff so your sleeve will fall nice at the bottom. To do that, what I suggest is that you just continue the line that you already have until the grain line on both sides. 
and then find the middle also on both sides. Now the measurement on the back side where you have the double notch, you're going to go down 1.5 centimeter or 5 8 of an inch, while on the front side where you have a single notch, you're going to go up 1 centimeter or 3 8 of an inch. Now we're going to trace the bottom curve line. What's important is to keep a 90 degree at the beginning and at the end, I would say for about a centimeter or two on each side. You're going to trace touching the half reference that we have, curve down and touch the bottom reference here at the other half and go back to the 90 degree for a little while. Now when you're happy with your line, you're going to place, I'm going to ask you a double notch on the back side this notch you will see it's for assembling with the facing because this line is way too curved to fold the hem so we have to do a hem facing we're going to trace the facing line five centimeter or two inch parallel to that new curved bottom line Now one little detail that will make these contour line a little softer, it's to soften the line at the elbow level. You could use your French curve or do it freehand. Now just put your seam allowance all around. my information it's my style 307 and that sleeve is going to be cut one pair now i'm just going to separate my paper then to uh, save time and gain precision i'm going to put another layer of paper behind pin my two layers together then we're ready to cut Before to separate my paper, I'm going to make sure I trace with the tracing wheel the facing line. Don't forget to trace your grain line also. Then the notch and same time I'm going to do my notch all around. Even at the elbow I will do the notch. It's going to help the sleeve to fall even better. Now you could separate your piece. You saw how much time we gain by doing two layers at the time. We only have to cut on the top line. If you're wondering why I didn't put seam allowance on that last line, it's because it's not sewn with anything. It's usually just overlock and you do your top stitch to hold it in place. Just like the sleeve, this is style 307 and it has to be cut one pair. Often we're going to choose to fuse this piece so the bottom of the sleeve is going to hold even better. There you go, your pagoda sleeve is finished. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I see you soon.